We're here on the Reserva Privada, Zorzal, the very first private reserve in the Dominican Republic. We left uh, our, our base at about 6.30 this morning and walked in the dark and have been hiking up some steep, wet, rocky slopes to find uh, this site where we've returned to a spot where we found Bicknell's Thrush in 2012, exactly one year ago, and at the exact same spot um, we played it a call and a song and here we are we have two now in our hands we set up a net and uh, remarkably the birds are still here these are not the same individuals that we banded last year we banded one these are both new but uh, it's remarkable that we've come back and found them we're still there's a third bird here and right now we have a net open and we're, and we're trying to catch that one that may be the banded individual from last year but uh, this is a uh, a great opportunity. We have a team here of Dominicans, uh, Felipe, uh, Jesus holding another Bic Nels, uh, Antonio and Vejo, and Ivan is uh, taping this. We'll show him in a minute. Um, but we're going to ban these two, two birds and let them go. And we're here to, this is a reserve that was a, a farm at one point. It's about uh, five, well it's about 1,200 hectares in size, uh, acres in size, and um, we're trying to recuperate it, recover the forest. There's some very nice forest. We're in some of it now, but much of the land is impacted, and we're going to uh, begin monitoring what's here now, and over time, um, hopefully see a nice recovery and uh, a good growing population of Bicknell's thrush. So, let me... Uh, Get a band out for this bird. This is the first uh, time that Felipe and Antonio have ever seen a Bicknell's thrush. It's a difficult bird to to get to know, as anyone who's studied it understands. Uh, they're secretive. They're very active at dusk and dawn, not during the rest of the day, and they don't show themselves well. So this is their first experience with a bird, but hopefully not their last. All right, so I have a band and the pliers now. Here's the bird's leg. We band on the right leg. And we'll just get that right on there. A nice bracelet, just the right size. It doesn't affect the bird in any way. It's no different than wearing a bracelet or a wrist watch for one of us. And I'll write down the number, which is a unique number. It'll identify this bird forever. Two, three, four, one. My aging eyes struggle to read these numbers sometimes. <laughs> two, four, two, one, three. All right, so that's its identity. That's its uh, avian social security number take a couple of measurements. We have a feeling this may be a female just because it feels small in my hand and is smaller than the other. We do know that this area of the country, this mountain range, the Cordillera Septentrional, is a very important one for female Bicknell's thrushes. The two sexes segregate in the winter. The males typically occupy the higher elevation cloud forest where they exclude, we think, many of the females. These birds are very territorial in the winter. They have small territories and they defend those against all other Bicknell's thrushes. And males, being a little bit larger, are able to outcompete females and kick them around more. So because habitat's so limited, we think that the males are getting the best habitat. The females end up in the lower quality habitat, which is these more impacted forests at lower elevations. So this bird has an 86 millimeter wing, which suggests that it is a female. The only way to know for sure is to take a blood sample, and I'm not going to do that. We've done many of those, and that's how we've learned that females are more common here in these forests, and males predominate in the other cloud forests, which are much more pristine and actually more extensive in other parts of the country. So wing 86. I'll just do a couple of other quick measurements. I'll measure her tail. I'm going to say her because I really do believe this is a female. 
And so when we put a, a playback down, playing back the calls and songs, the birds that are present think there's an intruder on their territory. So that is a good way to capture them. They come in to investigate and fly into the net, which is exactly what happened here. Tail is 67.5 on this bird. We have a standard series of measurements. Most females are below 90 millimeters wing. Most of them are around 85. Males tend to be above 90. Can't tell for sure without the blood, but it's a good indication. Um, quickly take um, a measurement of her, of her tarsus, her leg, lower leg bone. Just holding that. Let me make sure we're on zero. Yep. So her tarsus, her field tarsus as we call it, it's not actually the exact correct measurement of her bone, but it's the only easily measured in the field, is 29.90 millimeters. We have a, uh, a little endemic hummingbird flying around us here. Chlorostilbon, a Hispaniola and emerald, buzzing around us right now. There are black whiskered vireos singing in the trees. We heard an Antillian piculate a moment ago. There are narrow billed toadies in this forest. This is good forest for Big Nell's thrush. So this bird is, um, this is an older bird. This is what we call an after second year bird. She's got a very rounded, rounded tail. And that tells us it's not a bird that was hatched last summer, which we would call now a second year bird in its second year of life, but it's an older bird. She's at least two. She could be eight or ten. We've had uh, an 11 year old bird on the breeding grounds. So they do live a long time, some of them. But we know that she's not a, a young bird from last year. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to do is weigh her. So I just have to zero it. Now she's in the bag. I'm just going okay. to... Okay, hay un Jesus is going to go check the net. He thinks there's another bird in the net. Right, this is telling me she weighs 29 grams, which is good, good solid weight for a wintering big male thrush. So she's ready to go. I am saying she because I really believe this is a female. So there we go. Bicknell Strush on the Reserva Privada Zorzal. This reserve was created specifically around this migratory bird that spends its winter on Hispaniola. The great majority of the world's wintering population of Bicknell Strush is on this one island. So it's really, really important that we do a good job conserving the habitat. And these forests where the females are concentrated are especially important for the species. So we're concentrating a lot of our effort on trying to connect a series of scientific reserves in this region, which are already established with some private reserves, to create a corridor between them. It should be an amazing achievement. And we're getting there. This is the first step towards that goal. Muy bien. So it's March 3rd. This bird will be here probably another month, maybe five, maybe six weeks before it begins heading north, back to North America. Uh, maybe it'll end up on Mount Mansfield in Vermont. Maybe it'll be in the Adirondacks. Maybe it'll be in the Mountain. Gaspé Peninsula of Quebec. We don't know. But it's banded. We've weighed it. Um, and it's ready to go back to its territory. So. Here we go. Adios. I hope we'll see you again. Gone.